Yo, what is goody everybody? It's your boy Flo, and today we're going to be covering the best settings for Fortnite Chapter 2 and how to properly use Linear. Let's get it. But before we get into it, just go ahead and make love to that like button right now. Like people have covered these settings, but no one has went into detail as to why you should use these settings and how to properly use them. Alright, so with all that being said, let's get it going. So we're just going to go to settings. As you can tell, I do not use legacy settings, but we're going to get into detail as to why that's the case later on in the video. Now everything below the sensitivities and above control options are all personal preference. So you should honestly just do whatever you want when it comes to that. So for control options, toggle sprint should definitely be off. You do not want an extra keybind where it's not necessary. And that's where we go down to sprint by default. Now at this point in time, everybody should have this setting on. There's really no point in time where you will want to be walking, so just keep that on. As for sprint cases reloading, if you are walking forward or moving forward while trying to reload, you will not be able to reload if this was on, just for the simple fact that sprint by default is on. So just keep that off. Now tap to search slash interact, you want that on just for quality of life. You don't want to have to hold it if you don't need to hold it, right? And that goes the same for hold to swap pickup. If you don't have to hold it, why would you want to hold it? Just push the button and pick up the gun. Now toggle targeting is similar to toggle sprint. It's an extra button press that's unnecessary. If you can hold the button to aim in and let go when you're done, why wouldn't you want that? So just keep this setting off. So there's a little controversy behind reset building choice, but I have two really good reasons as to why this setting should be on. So first, as long as you have Builder Pro built immediately on, which we will get into, then everything that you place will build immediately. So there's no reason to want the previous building piece to be the same as the new one, because no matter what you place, it'll build immediately. Also, if you were to use a trap in a fight and then switch to your gun to finish them off, when approaching your next fight and attempting to build a wall or such, it won't build that immediately because you previously used your trap. So it'll be on your trap when you switch to build mode. So that's why you should have reset building choice on. As for aim assist and edible aim assist, we'll get to in a minute since they're a part of the new look sensitivity tab. And alongside sprint by default, turbo building should definitely be on, just for the simple fact that you wanna be able to hold the button down to continue to build a certain piece, as opposed to pushing the button for each individual placement. And for the next three settings, they're all personal preference. However, I suggest you have them on just for quality of life. They give you an option to make your life easier, so why not take it? As for auto open doors, this should be on, not only because it makes your life easier by not having to push an extra button to walk through a door, but if you're build fighting somebody and you accidentally edit a door in the wall, you can walk right through it without it forcing you to stop and push a button to open the door. Now, with confirm edit on release being one of the new and most talked about settings as of late, I can without a doubt say that everybody should have this setting on. It doesn't matter if you use single, double, or triple edit binds or confirm edit on release. Everybody should have this on just because it makes your edits way quicker and more consistent. Like for example, if you're done selecting the boxes that you're intending to edit and you consciously are going to push the confirm button, you unconsciously let go of the select button because you're done selecting. So between letting go of the select button and pushing the confirm button, you double the speed of the confirm and you double the likelihood that the confirm goes through. As for auto pickup items, I suggest you have this off. Just because if you have an open inventory slot and you're looting somebody, you don't want to pick up something that you're not intending to pick up. So to be more precise about what you pick up, I suggest you just have this off and click what you want to pick up. Auto sort consumables to the right, however, is more so a personal preference. But just a heads up for controller players, Epic did change the way that you switch back to your inventory after having your pickaxe out. So let's just say your shotgun that you wanted to switch back to was in your right slot, your most right slot. If you push L1 after pickaxing, it'll switch to the most right slot. If you push R1 after you have your pickaxe out, it'll switch to the most left slot. But now Epic has it to where if whatever gun or item that you have selected before you switch to your pickaxe, when you switch it back to your inventory slots, it'll automatically go back to that exact item. It doesn't matter where in the inventory slots it is. 
and Builder Pro Build Immediately, as hinted earlier, should be on, just for the simple fact that it places your building pieces quicker. And who wouldn't want that? And controller edit hold time should not matter as long as you have an edit keybind instead of the edit slash switch mode keybind. As for vibration, this is also a personal preference. However, to ensure that you're less distracted while playing an intense game like Fortnite, I suggest you have this off. And as for the rest of these settings, they are all again personal preference. Doesn't matter whether you have these on or off. However, I've heard that if you have these off, that they help your frames or whatnot, but my frames don't really drop anyway, so you can do whatever you want with these settings. Now, before we get into the juicy part, which everybody has probably been waiting for, go ahead and hit that sub button. I'm gonna be doing way more videos like this to show you guys the best settings and mechanical tips to ensure that you guys can be one of the best. So, go ahead and hit that sub button, and if you're a real one, turn on post notice don't be one of the bunch that misses out all right now going into the new controller sensitivity tab go straight down to use advanced options and turn that mug on all right so to start off let me say that it doesn't matter what my numbers are your numbers can be different the only thing i'm going to do is explain to you what each individual setting actually is and how to actually find the perfect settings for you also, before we get started, I want you to know that I'm going to go in the exact order that you should go in when adjusting these settings. It is absolutely essential that you go in this order if you want to get the most accurate settings for you. So for the first setting, we're going to be going all the way down here and it is look input curve. Now by default, it is set to exponential, but I suggest that everybody watching this video switch to linear right now. Now what linear basically is, is for example, if you have your look horizontal and vertical speeds on 60%, when you move your sticks, it'll go from 0% straight to 60%. However, if you have your setting on exponential, it'll go from 0% to 1% to 2%, all the way up to 60%. Now around the halfway mark, it will get exponentially quicker, but that's basically what it does. But with that being said, this setting makes you way less accurate because you have 60 different percentages to get used to as opposed to one set percentage. It's easier to get used to one thing at one time as opposed to multiple things at one time. And that's why linear will make you more accurate and more consistent with your aim. Now, the next setting that we're gonna be looking at, as you could have probably guessed, is look horizontal and vertical speed. Now, the best way to find a speed that fits you perfectly is to go into an aim trainer and practice your close range hip firing. You don't want to be aiming down your sights because we have an entirely different category for that. So to ensure that you're focused on practicing your look speed, you want to only be hip firing. But keep in mind, you want to be able to turn as quick as you possibly can while maintaining a considerably accurate shot. You don't want to crank this all the way up to 100% just so you can call yourself the fastest player. If you can't hit any of your shots, then at that point, it's irrelevant. Now, after you find the perfect horizontal and vertical speed, you then want to go down to turning horizontal and vertical boost. What this does is when you push or pull the sticks fully to the top, bottom, or sides, it'll then apply a boost to the horizontal or vertical speeds, depending on which direction you push or pull the sticks. Now, the best way to find the perfect horizontal and vertical boost for you is to simply do a 360. You want to place a marker directly in front of you and align your crosshairs with that marker. Then you want to do a 360 and land your crosshairs directly on that marker. If your crosshair lands too far to the right, then your boost is too high. If your crosshair lands too far to the left, then your boost is too low. Your overall goal is to consistently land your crosshair on the marker. Now, if you're constantly landing your crosshair slightly to the right, but it's always close, then at that point, you want to go down to turning boost ramp time. Now what this is, is the amount of time it takes to apply the boost to the horizontal and vertical speeds. So that's why I say if you're doing the 360 test and you keep landing your cursor close to the marker, but always slightly to the right of it, you then want to apply a boost ramp time so it takes a little bit longer for the boost to kick in. So in return, you can land your cursor closer to the marker. As to instant boost when building, I suggest you have this on, just so you can make quick turns without having to have a high building sense. 
and for ADS look horizontal and vertical speed it's kind of self-explanatory because it's the same thing as look horizontal and vertical speed except it's only for when you're aiming down sights and the best way to find the perfect speed for you is to simply do a mid and long range aim trainer while aiming down your sights and just like the ADS look speed the ADS turning boost is basically the same thing as the regular turning boost. All it does is applies a boost to the horizontal or vertical speed depending on which direction you fully push or pull the sticks. And the best way to find the perfect ADS turning boost for you is when you're doing mid or long range tracking in an aim trainer. If you're fully push or pulling the sticks in a certain direction and it's too slow, you need to raise the boost. If it's too fast, you need to lower the boost. However, you want to make sure you're starting at 0% and then going up from there. And for ADS turning boost ramp time, just like the rest of the ADS sensitivity settings, this is similar to the turning boost ramp time. If you feel as if every time you fully push up your sticks to adjust to the target, you end up ahead of the target, at that point you need to add an ADS turning boost ramp time so that it's not so instant when applying that boost and you can be more accurate. Now after you're done with the ADS sensitivity settings, we're going to go all the way back up to build mode and edit mode sensitivities. Now this is all based on your personal preference, whether you rather be a smooth builder or a fast builder or a smooth editor or a fast editor. This is all based on your playstyle. But if you're just trying to figure out how to find a good build mode, then you need to be doing free builds. And if you're trying to find a good edit mode, then you need to be doing edit courses. Now you can do edits while you free build, which I would suggest is the best way, but either or, these are all based on your playstyle. Now after all that, we're going to go back down to look dampening time. This is probably the most important setting when it comes to linear, because this is what stops the jittery movements that comes from linear. This is basically the curve that Exponential provides, but you actually have control over the curve. So if you want to have the precise accuracy that Linear offers, but still be able to be a smooth player and make small adjustments to your aim, then you need to have a look dampening time. Now from my experience, 0.01 through 0.04 are the most ideal look dampening times to be able to keep the freedom of your right stick and not feel like exponential. And with that being said, we are done with the advanced controller sensitivity settings. For brightness, you can have this at whatever value you like, and for volume, you can have these on whatever you like. Now for sound and 3D headphones, I 100% suggest you turn this on because simply it makes sound better. Now for a setting that nobody really uses and I just do not know why, visualized sound effects should be on. All this does is turns the sound from stereo to mono. Directional sound in Fortnite really isn't that good anyway. You know when someone's above you based on that sound, and you know when someone's below you based on that sound. And also, visualized sound effects allows you to see sounds that you can't even hear yet. If there's a boat nearly 100 meters away from you, you won't be able to even hear it. But with visualized sound effects, you can see the sound, and you can also see where the sound is coming from. And now to the accessibility tab. Now for colorblind mode, you can have this on whatever you want, it's just personal preference. But for lock input method as mouse and enable foot controller, you want to have those on and turn foot controller dead zone and max throttle all the way down. Now it doesn't say it, but what this does is makes the input delay on controller less than what it usually is. And now ladies and gents, we are done. <laughs> if you guys want a keybinds video, make sure to get this video to 30 likes. This video was already getting longer than when I expected it to be, and I don't want to push it by going over each individual keybind. So if you guys do want a keybind video, make sure to smash that like button and get this to 30 likes. I know y'all can do it, because y'all the realists. But, with all that being said, I love you guys, I appreciate you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoy the few clips that I put after this. Peace out, and I'll fuck with y'all later.